Hello everyone, I'm Michael and I'm presenting a scalable methodology for agile chip development with open source hardware components. This paper is a joint work of Columbia University, Harvard and IBM Research. The slowdown of Moore's law and the end of dinner scaling had major impact on the architecture of processor chips, resulting in where we are now, heterogeneous system on chip architectures. These architectures combine general purpose processors with many specialized hardware accelerators. They deliver superior energy efficient performance compared to homogeneous wood core. The complexity of heterogeneous architecture design increased design costs exponentially. Although major semiconductor companies can minimize this issue by leveraging design reuse, the same is not true for startups and academia. In recent years, the emerging open source hardware movement is addressing this design complexity challenged by promoting design reuse. Together with open source IP libraries and agile SOC integration methodology, it's necessary to develop agile methodologies for the physical design of these SOCs. Such agile methodologies must have three properties, flexibility for smooth integration of open source hardware and being easily adaptable to different technologies and DA tools, robustness to not only achieve quality of results metrics, but also enable efficient verification of design correctness. And further, scalability to handle growth in size and complexity with a sublinear growth in computation infrastructure, engineer effort, and design time. This paper presents a flexible, robust, and scalable methodology for agile physical design of Ertigian's SOCs architectures. The methodology builds on ESP platform. ESP is an open source platform developed at Columbia University. It combines a configurable tile based architecture for SOCs with an agile design methodology. For years, ESP has been used for FPGA SOC prototype. We now extend its methodology with a new an ASIC design flow that leverage ESP tile-based architecture property for agile physical design. First, I will present the ESP architecture and enhancement we made to support ASIC design. Then, I will detail our physical flow and our verification and testing strategies. Finally, I will discuss our experience with two chips design and the conclusion remarks. The ESP architecture has a tile-based organization. For example, this is an instance of an architecture with 16 tiles. Heterogeneous tiles are connected through a multiplane network on chip. All tiles have a modular socket that interface the encapsulated P to the NOC. There are five types of tiles, and each of them provides specific service. For instance, the processor tile provides level two cache. The memory tile provides less level cache and external memory interface. The accelerator tile provides DMA control and interpreter service. The shared local memory provides additional on-chip memory. Finally, the auxiliary tile provides Ethernet and WARP external interface for host PC communication, system interruption control, and put ROM. To adapt the architecture to ASIC, we add a new configuration register, a local digital clock oscillator, which combined with a synchronous interface in the communication between the NOC and the tile, enable each tile run at its own clock. We call this approach communication synchronous Gauss because we keep the principles of each tile being asynchronous to each other and locally synchronous, but build a synchronous network on chip for global on-chip communication. In addition, we add a JTAG interface that bypasses a NOC for tile tests only. And finally, a new flow for smooth memory macro RTL integration. Let's now discuss the tile-based physical design flow. Once all open source components are integrated into ESP, we partition the design and perform physical implementation from RTL to GDS2 for each different tile. This approach has significant advantage compared to full design implementation, including the ability to parallelize the implementation of the tiles, the necessity of less powerful machines, the shorter time to execute the flow, and it's easier to detect and solve issues. Our methodology provides productivity gains to a critical subset of these steps that are hard to fully automate, such as timing constraints, power constraints, pin assignment, power strategy, and top-level floor plan. For the top-level floor plan, using NOC mesh topology, we evaluate three options. The first option use different size of width and height for each row and column. Even though this option can minimize area, it has significant drawbacks, such as the necessity of implementing each tile, 
the non-regularity of knock path increases top-level time enclosure complexity, and different shapes makes it possible to swap tiles locations in the floor plan or replacing a tile at the last minute. The second option has all tiles with the same shape. While removing all drawbacks of the custom option, it forces all tile size to match the size of the largest tile, thus resulting area overhead and degraded knock frequency. Finally, the third option is similar, but allows larger P components being integrated into a cluster of tiles, while with smaller ones can share a single tile. This option offers a good compromise between area overhead on one hand and flexibility, scalability, and robustness on the other hand. The physical regularity of the tiles combined with the same logic interface and communication synchronous Gauss block strategy significantly simplify the time constraint files. The designer only needs to specify the IP and knock clock frequencies for each tile, which facilitates the addition of new accelerators. The auxiliary and memory tiles are the exception since they have external interface. Their external delay values are shared with the top level constraints with a minor discount. The technology dependent constraints do not change across the top level and all tiles. In the constraint files, they are specified with variables that are mapped to the technology-specific parameters in another file. Similarly, power constraint specification are also simplified and can be reused across all tiles by only specifying which low power technique is in place, multiply voltage, power switch shutoff, or both. There are two power domains per tile and they follow the clock domains, the IP power domain in blue and the knock power domain in red. The pins are assigned to locations relative to the tiles corner. Since all tiles will have the pins in the same position, it facilitates the top level integration. The power plan is similar across all tiles. The VAP stripe supplies the IP domain, while the VNOC stripe supplies the NOC domain. The main is used for memories, and VSS is the common ground. For technologies that have several metal layers, the power stripes are distributed as a grid in most layers. The top level uses the highest layer to connect all tiles to their corresponding power domain. At the tile level, higher layers use all power domain stripes to maximize both the power integrity and the pin area for connections to the top level. Medium layer stripes are split between the IP and the knock domains, as the figure on the right shows. Finally, Lower levels forms the two stripes grid, VNOC VSS and VIP VSS, supply the standard cells. In the case of technology with fewer metal layers, the grid in medium layers is optional. The main stripes can be merged to VNOC and together with VSS are connected to the other tiles in the top metal layers. VIP is directly connected to bumps over the tile. Now let's move to the top level. As already mentioned, the regular shape design options significantly increase flexibility. CPU, accelerators, and shared local memories can freely swap locations. In addition, new tile can easily replace existing ones. To enable scalability, we favor flip chip packaging with power domains array. We leave wire bond packaging for small SOCs only. During the implementation, the power domain array is flexibly grouped into a few power domain clusters based on the SOC floor plan. For example, for the case one, the power domain are grouped based on the tile functionality with, and the physical location to support flexible power sequencing while maintaining low IR drop. In this case, there are 16 VDD VSS arrays plus a global VDD VSS supplying the knock. As the design scales, more power domain clusters are allocated to provide even power distribution and testing flexibility, as the case two shows. During the physical design, the power grids of all power domains are distributed across the chip to decouple the SOC floor plan with the power striping stack. The IR drop to each tile is carefully analyzed to guarantee a balanced power distribution. Closing timing in a partition flow, it's a hard task because each block doesn't have visibility of its upstream and downstream blocks. Therefore, it's necessary to estimate the external delays. The inaccuracy of this estimation leads to several time enclosure interactions between top level and block level. 
the logic and physical regularity of the tiles significantly improve the external delays estimation. This enables single attempt top level time enclosure through interface logic models. On the top level knock clock tree viewpoint, only neighboring tiles have to be constrained, which relax the clock, the clock skew constraints. Now, let's see how we verify and test. Our verification flow is focused on the components integration and system functionality only. We assume all open source hardware are already verified and ESP components such as NOC, socket, etc., are pre-verified. With that in mind, our verification flow has four approaches. RTL and at least simulation using bare metal application, full system FPGA emulation for longer tests, and logic equivalent checking for logic implementation correctness. In the bare metal, the CPU first executes the bootloader after reset. Then it accesses the external memory through the memory tile to read instructions. Further, the CPU configures and invokes the respective accelerator tile. The accelerator executes the MA for the computation and raises an interruption signal once it's finished. The CPU validates the computation and finally writes out the outputs through UART. After synthesis, we swap the RTL to the Netlist view on the tile under test. The same verification step is executed with a simplified bare metal program to keep simulation time manageable. For longer application tests, the full SOC or subset of, of it in the case of large SOC is prototyped on FPGA for si system simulation. This allows to boot Linux and run real applications for gathering performance estimates. Our testing environment connects through FMC, the chipboard, into an FPGA board that channels to the DRAM memory. A host PC sends the bootloader to the chip and the program and data to the DRAM through Ethernet. The UART interface gathers the chip response to the PC. This environment allows us to perform simple tests such as NOC status and memory access, as well as complex tests such as run bare metal and boot Linux to run full applications. In the case of testing issues, each tile has a JTAG model that bypasses the NOC to directly access the tiles. Finally, Thanks to the synergy of the verification and testing methodology, the ESP architecture and the testing tools ESP provides, such as ESP Link, we are able to run Linux in a time span of two weeks after receiving our first chip, which we are going to discuss now. This chip, recently published at SSERC, is our first chip using the proposed methodology. It's a domain specific SOC in 12 nanometer CMOS for the merge application domain of swarm based perception. It's a 4x4 tiles heterogeneous SOC with full open source hardware components. These components include four REN RISC V developed by ETH Zurich and three NVDLAs developed by NVIDIA and available in public domain. The chip features also many components developed by us, including three FFTs and one VTurb accelerators, four memory tiles, and one auxiliary tile. The chip has 16 power domains, 17 clock domains, over 1400 bumps and the knock frequency can range from 142 up to 800 megahertz. The accelerators, and to some extent the CPU, have operating frequencies that can range from 300 megahertz up to 1.5 giga, as the voltage increases from 0.5 to 1. Altogether, the chip outperforms seven times the same architecture prototype into a high-end FPGA, while delivering 62 times energy saving when executing the mini-array workload. MiniArray is an open source workload for swarm based perception developed by IBM. Using our methodology, this chip was designed in four months with less than 10 engineers all working remotely. Compared to the first chip, the second chip we added seven new accelerators, scale over twice the number of tiles and clock domains, increased over 40% the number of power domains, and practically tripled the area. In this second chip, we also cluster four tiles to accommodate one very complex accelerator and three simpler ones share a single tile. With respect to computing power needs to complete the design, the machine running time remained the same for the tile implementation, 12 hours, using a 16 core with a 64 gigabytes RAM machine. The processing of the top level implementation increased by 29% from 51 to 66 hours using a 64 core with a 376 gigabytes run machine. While the second chip is substantially more complex than the first chip, the duration 
of the design cycle and the effort of the engineering team remains comparable. This demonstrates the scalability of our proposed methodology. In summary, we present a scalable, flexible, and robust methodology for agile chip development with open source hardware components, which is fully push button open source hardware integration for ASIC prototyping. It minimizes manual steps of physical design flow. It smooths the top level integration. It limits the design computer resource as design scale. It has a comprehensive verification in all design step and rapid user-friendly testing environment. And finally, it increased productivity demonstrated by two complex tape outs. Thank you.